Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start on my review of The Mysterious Affair at Styles by Agatha Christie. So I have this like gorgeous little facsimile edition here that my uncle gave to me. Somehow I've never actually got to this one, um, even though this is the first of the Agatha Christie ones. Uh, the first Hercule Poirot novel and I believe her first published book. So I'm going to read you this little tiny blurb here, it says, The Mysterious Affair at Styles by Agatha Christie. This novel was originally written as the result of a bet that the author, who had previously never written a book, could not compose a detective novel in which the reader would not be able to spot the murderer, though having access to the same clues as the detective. The author has certainly won her bet, and in addition to a most ingenious plot of the best detective type, she has introduced a new type of detective in the shape of a Belgian. This novel has had the unique distinction for a first book of being accepted by the Times as a serial for its weekly edition. That's very cool. Doesn't really tell you what it's about. It's a murder mystery, it's Agatha Christie. That's what she does, isn't it, Biggie? And then we get this little bit here where Poirot is introduced for the first time, which I thought was very interesting. Poirot was an extraordinary looking little man. He was hardly more than five feet four inches, but carried himself with great dignity. His head was exactly the shape of an egg, and he always perched it a little on one side. His moustache was very stiff and military. The neatness of his attire was almost incredible. I believe a speck of dust would have caused him more pain than a bullet wound. Yet this quaint dandified little man who, I was sorry to see, now limp badly, had been in his time one of the most celebrated members of the Belgian police. As a detective, his flair had been extraordinary, and he had achieved triumphs by unravelling some of the most baffling cases of the day. I'm glad that he gets introduced immediately as a Belgian, because kind of one of the running jokes is everyone thinks that he's French. Here we have like a little map. Uh, there are a few of those in here. Um, Christie's kind of a fan of including the maps. Chapter four is titled Poirot Investigates, and I thought that was interesting because there is actually a collection called Poirot Investigates. I love this little Poirot quote here. He says, you give too much rein to your imagination. Imagination is a good servant and a bad master. The simplest explanation is always the most likely. Which is Poirot there channeling Occam's razor, which is very cool. Oh yeah, here we have um, a letter is reproduced here. And look at that. It's almost impossible to read. I did actually get through it. My dear Evelyn, can we not bury the, hat the hatchet? I have found it hard to... Forget the things you said against my dear husband, but I am an old woman and very fond of you. Yours affectionately, Emily Maplethorpe. Oh, Inglethorpe. So yeah, you can just about read it, but still, geez. We have an N bomb in this, but I suppose you do have to remember the time it was published. Um, when was it? 1921. And I actually recently read uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald from 1920 that had an N bomb in it as well. So, kind of got surprised. And then we have this, I think this is very typical of Hastings. Um, I don't know what possessed me. This is somebody hardly knows. I don't know what possessed me. Her beauty, perhaps, as she sat there, with the sunlight glinting down on her head. Perhaps a sense of relief at encountering someone who so obviously could have no connection with the tragedy. Perhaps honest pity for her youth and loneliness. Anyway, I leant forward and taking a little hand, I said awkwardly, Marry me, Cynthia. Unwittingly, I had hit upon a sovereign remedy for her tears. She sat up at once, drew her hand away and said with some asperity, Don't be silly. I was a little annoyed. I'm not being silly. I'm asking you to do me the honour of becoming my wife. To my intense surprise, Cynthia burst out laughing and called me a funny dear. It's perfectly sweet of you, she said, but you know you don't want to. Yes, I do. I've got... Never mind what you've got. You don't really want to, and I don't either. Well, of course, that settles it, I said stiffly. But I don't see anything to laugh at. There's nothing funny about a proposal. And then she says, no, indeed, somebody might accept you next time. And then this just tickled me because I always look out for the ejaculations in Poirot. So we get this uh, silly ass I ejaculated, which just tickles my sense of humour. So overall, really did enjoy this one. I think it definitely helped that I read this cool facsimile edition as well. I mean, it is a pretty good place to start with Agatha Christie because it's her first novel and it's the first Poirot book. Very competently written and well executed. I mean, she was a master or a mistress right from the get-go. Uh, I would give this a 4.25 out of 5 and I particularly enjoyed meeting Hastings and Poirot for the first time after having personally read so many. I mean, I must have read 40 Agatha Christie novels by this point. I'm actually not even sure how this one passed me by. Um, but that, that opportunity to go meet them again when I already know them, I thought was very cool. So yeah, I did enjoy reading this one and would of course recommend. 
So there we have it, that's what I thought of The Mysterious Affair at Styles by Agatha Christie. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.